Testing, testing. Hello, hello. Can you hear me? I can hear you, can you hear me? I can hear you. Cool, let's go. Whew, what a week it's been. Truly. I'm Alex. And I'm Emily, and welcome to What A Week. You want it, we got it. We're bringing you news by Zillennials for Zillennials. Let's dive right in. Okay, so all of you know Valentine's Day is here, which I've always loved Valentine's Day. I think it's just such a fun, like, holiday. I'm, like, eh about it. I mean, when I was in a relationship, it was cute because it's, like, you did Mm -hmm. something and it was fun and now I'm single. But I always (laughs) acknowledge that it was, like, a Hallmark holiday. So it was, like, Mm -hmm. you know, but it's it's so cute. It's, like, a day to show appreciation for someone, your significant other, unless you're single and then you're just alone. (laughs) See, and like last year <laughs> was my first year not being single on Valentine's Day. Oh, and that's I was like, cute. it was like, I was like, it was, it was fun. But it's yeah. like, I think every year is fun because it's just like, I don't know, like I loved when we were kids and everyone gave each other Valentine's and it was just yeah. like such a cute like friendship holiday. And yeah. I like the whole like Galentine's Day. Like I love that theme. I do like that. You have a really good point because I do like that nowadays mm-hmm. I feel like people put a twist on it. So it's like if you're single, like you're, you and your single friends will do something if you can or like you'll give something to your friends just to show them that you love them. I think that is really cute. It's just like a nice gesture and a nice reminder. I think so too. And on this episode, we wanted to give y'all a little something and also us too because we love giving advice. And this <laughs> so is going to be fun. Yeah. So we decided to have a advice episode dedicated to y'all sent your advice and we're about to answer it. Question number one. I've decided to stay away from relationships for a while because I realized I fell into a pattern of trying too hard to make them work with different people after the one with my ex ended. My question is, after being single for a while, when do you know when you're ready to begin seeing other people again? Hmm, This is a great question. This is a really great, great question. And I feel like I'm someone who was like perpetually single. Like I was always single. And Mm -hmm. I think the biggest, biggest advice I would give for people like who are single, maybe wanting to get into a relationship is think about why you want to get into a relationship. Is it because you want companionship? Is it because you want someone to, I don't know, be there? So I, I, I just feel like you need to figure out, is it like, reasons you want it just someone to add to your life that's already at 100% or are you at 50 and looking for someone to make it 100 and I think that's the biggest thing you need someone who's only going to add to your life that you already have and not create I'm not making sense (laughs) but no you are you you are okay good yeah and I honestly agree with you because I'm Mm -hmm. the opposite of Alex so to give a little bit of background Alex has been single for a really long time and she just got in a relationship with Jack a, a year ago um, we have been together since September 2019. So over or, a year. That was our first date. Yeah. So a while. And um, I was in a relationship for five years from when I was 18 to I was 20, fuck, 23. Yeah. Um, and I got out of... <laughs> it was like a year ago uh, that you guys broke up. Literally right? like a week after Valentine's Day. So yes. Yeah, so I've wow. been single for a year now. So this is my first Valentine's Day in six years alone. It's it's fine um but I'm kind of like going through this now too where I'm like okay I've been single for a while but like is it time to start dating is it like not time to start dating and I agree with Alex it ultimately comes down to like where you are in your life as a human being and as an individual because until you are 100% okay and in love with yourself you can't give yourself to someone else the person asking the question realized like I fell into a pattern of trying too hard to make them work with different people after the one with my ex ended and I feel like it's also important to reflect and be like okay, like, have I fixed all the things I wanted to fix for myself? Or have I, are there still some things I need to work through? Because the last thing you want is to repeat the same mistakes in your new relationship, you know? And so you just have to really think like, for me personally, like one of the reasons we broke up is just because I needed to work on myself. And so it's just like, okay, have I worked on myself enough that now when I get in a new relationship, I'm not going to make new those same mistakes because then it's kind of like, no, like who wants that? That's a pattern. We don't want patterns. So yeah, just make sure you're getting into the relationship for the best reasons for you. Make sure, like Alex said, they're adding to your life. They're a bonus. You shouldn't be looking for a relationship to make you feel like, oh, I have a boyfriend. My life's perfect. 
No. Boyfriends or girlfriends will not fix your life. They will make your life better in some ways, but they can also complicate it in some ways. So at the end of the day, you need to love yourself and be happy with who you are first. Totally. No, I fully agree. And that was a perfect ending, but I want to add one more thing. Um, I liked that you emphasized the try too hard to make them work with different people because when you just reread that back to me, I thought about it and I'm like, honestly, I mean, there's um, exceptions to every rule, but I feel like the beginning of a relationship should be easy. I feel like the beginning should not be difficult. And if you're mm-hmm. trying too hard to make like a square fit into a circle, it's, it's just, not it's not going to happen. So I, I think that's a good sign too, that um, you could start to casually date and see other people, but that doesn't mean you have to be in a relationship. You can just kind of like play the field and see what happens. Okay, well, our next question, this person said, my girlfriend lives in NorCal and I live in SoCal. So I'm thinking up ideas for how to make Valentine's Day fun long distance. Besides FaceTiming, what else would you recommend? Okay, so I think it's so hard, right? Because I was also in a long distance relationship, not NorCal, SoCal, we weren't as far away, but still it's it's hard. Um, and it's, you know, you're especially now with COVID, a lot of your dates are FaceTime date. So like, how do you spice it up and do something different? I think something really cute that I've done through work that could be really cute for a date is having, um, taking a cooking class together. There's so many services online that like you can pay for a private cooking class and they'll literally deliver everything to your door and you can just learn to cook a cute meal. And then after have like a FaceTime eating it. And that's so fun. Like I've had so many, I've done that, I think three times and I've had fun every single time. And that's like a twist on the FaceTime or like you can do a scavenger hunt, like have your girlfriend or boyfriend, like look for stuff in their apartment. And then like, you can be like, okay, save all this stuff, put it in a basket. We're going to use it for our next date. Or just do like a twist on your FaceTime. Cause you don't want it to just be the same as every other time you want it to be a little bit special. Right. Um, I know you said besides FaceTime and I gave you FaceTime tips. <laughs> um, I know that's the hardest because FaceTime does have to be a component. But I mean, one thing I've seen people do on TikTok, and this is typically done with people together, but I think this could be a cool separate thing. Um, People kind of like went into Target or you could do pickup because that would be safer, curbside pickup. But they did like, okay, pick out like, a co- something that's the same color of what your significant other likes. And then the next one is pick out something that like they would find comfortable. And it's like, you get these, a bunch of little gifts and maybe you could mail each other like these like little baskets. Oh, put cute. Together. And then you could open them over FaceTime. And then it's like, oh, it was a fun activity to do separate and then come together and explain like the thought process behind each thing. And it's like, yes, it's a gift, but hopefully it's a bunch of little things. So it's not like super extravagant or anything. So it's yeah. Kind of fun. And try to not pick anything that's too heavy because then the shipping's more expensive. Perfect. Yes, yes, that too. <laughs> <laughs> okay, your next question. <laughs> This is a good one. (laughs) Do I like him or is it just quarantine? How can I tell? (laughs) I mean, valid question. And I will raise you and say, maybe don't overthink it because I think being quarantined and being a bit isolated could make you see what you really do enjoy and what you really do like. So maybe, possibly, someone that you're maybe wouldn't necessarily like in, if not given the circumstances, maybe there's a certain aspect of that person that you're like, oh, wait, I actually do like this. I actually do want to get to know. Maybe it's not my normal type, but I'm like reevaluating what I like. And maybe that's something you like. So I say, uh, go for it no matter what and see what happens. I see your point. Mm-hmm. And I agree, like this situation could make you go for people that you normally don't go for. But I also feel like at the end of the day, if you guys are just flirting and you're just like not having a really good in-depth like conversation that has like sustenance to it you just like like you, you're just horny and you just want someone <laughs> to be honest <laughs> which not which, a bad which thing. is not a bad thing <laughs> but it's like I don't but it's like if you're just flirting and having like small talk but you just enjoy talking to him you probably are just like simping and it's quarantine but if right. you guys are having like actual good conversations where you're really getting to know this person and you're like oh my god I have is it do I like him or is it quarantine like then you like him because then you act or her because Mm -hmm. then you really know like oh I know this person I know them decently well we're like having really good conversations it's not just like boring like what show are you watching and I still like him and I think those are genuine feelings so I say go for it go for it because even if you don't you'll find it out eventually (laughs) then you can that's true (laughs) what do you have to lose exactly (laughs) 
<laughs> okay, so the next one asked, ideas on how to spice up floor play or get the partner into it. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I'm more like, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Alex, you take this one because I feel like you're better at this stuff than I. Yeah, okay, I can take this one. I mean, I think we really underrate, and I find myself underrating, making out. Like, I think we love to skip ahead past making out, but I think spending, like, a solid amount of time just making out will for sure get y'all in the mood, and then you can kind of escalate it from there. But I think we, like, make out for, like, I've even noticed myself do this. Like, I'll make out for, like, two minutes, and then it's like, okay, next step. Okay. <laughs> but it's... <laughs> Yeah. But it's like making out's fun. And like, that's what we used to do in the very beginning of relationships. Like, I mean, maybe some people had sex on the first date. I didn't have sex on my first date <laughs> at Jack's. So it's like making out used to kind of be like the main thing. And I feel like we need to bring that back because that's so fun. And for girls, it's really important too, because I feel like girls need that foreplay a little bit more than guys but also good point because when you're like dating someone it's like a little bit like be playful and like make out with mm -hmm. them and like play with their hair or, like touch them and other like their like shoulders or their neck or stuff like that yeah. so that's like fun and like exciting and then that will get him into it <laughs> or her I think so too it. and I think it's like kind of fun to like not just make out laying on a bed like maybe like stand up or like if you can in a different part of the house if there's no roommate it's like do that it's like kind of like more it feels a little more spontaneous yeah no I like it like do it in different places not just a bed totally next question says my girlfriend of four years and I went on a break in the middle of January which was her decision the reason behind it is that she wants to learn how to grow on her own, and she said she hasn't been feeling like herself recently. We still talk every couple of days just to check in. Couple questions. Am I wrong to be mad or upset? I'm trying to give her the space she needs and asked for, but it's really hard. Should I do something for her for Valentine's? Okay, so first, I don't think you're wrong for feeling mad or upset I think your feelings are totally valid I think it's really difficult because when you go on a break with someone it's like so one person wants to go on the break you know because if you both wanted to go on the break you break you would break up so for the person who like didn't ask for the break it could kind of be like confusing or difficult um I I will say I've gone on a break my old relationship I my only like real relationship to be honest um we went on a break twice in the relationship and the first time we went on a break it was like the best thing that could have happened to us um it it made us stronger so it, I don't necessarily think all breaks have like an expiration date and just mean you're gonna break up I don't believe that but I do feel like you know if she's going on this break because she wants to improve herself, then your relationship is only going to get stronger when she works on herself. Because like we said a couple questions earlier, you can't really give yourself to someone if you're not loving yourself 100%. Um, as for your second question, should I do something for her on Valentine's Day? Um, because you technically are on a break, I wouldn't go full out. I would maybe just like send her like a nice little card or him. Oh, you said girlfriend, her. Okay. Um, I would maybe send her like a card or just like a one and just do something really small and like, or maybe like focus on an experience and not a gift because, you know, you are in this kind of like different gray area. So um, don't make it, don't go full out by all means, just do something really small and like nice and just an experience that you guys can enjoy each other's company. Um, and just keep your head up high. Like you're definitely totally valid for feeling mad or upset or confused. But I think you know, if the, the break is really because she wants to grow on her own and just like isn't feeling like herself, then it's really important that you give that time to her to kind of figure it out. And hopefully, you know, your relationship will get better soon and it will just improve in the long term. Mm -hmm. I think too, whoever asked this question, like, focus on what you need to and have a conversation with her if you haven't already. Um, cause I think that's great that you're giving her the space and, um, emphasizing what she needs and why she wants this break. But I think you should really kind of look into yourself and figure out like, what do you need from this? Because I do think it's, it can, like, I think it's so amazing that you're giving her her space, but it can feel a little unfair. And I think if you haven't already expressed your, how you feel to her, I think that's definitely a conversation you both should have too. I agree. Okay. Next question. Tips on dealing with falling head over heels for a good friend. Oh, I love Ooh. this. 
<laughs> I mean, okay, so I will say this from my perspective from in my past that I had um, been into a friend and how that went. So I always had these feelings for this friend. And then both of us got drunk. This was like literally like his 21st birthday. So this was like, what, like four years ago now. But um, like we both got drunk that night and we both kind of like expressed feelings for each other. And we're no longer friends. Let's just oh. say that. Oh, <laughs> Have you never heard this story? No, I've heard the story, but I was trying to like pretend like I was listening to it for the first time. I, know I love it. Well. Thank you. The, you were a great actress. <laughs> but like, it's just, it's one of those situations where I think you have to express how you feel because if that situation never happened, and he turned out to be not like the greatest and I was probably immature in the situation too, but it's just like, if you don't express that, I think those feelings are always going to be there. And so I think you need to express it, but I don't think you can expect anything from it, of course. Um, And I think you should do it in a way that won't make them uncomfortable. Like don't bombard them. Maybe just be like, Hey, like, I want to tell you this. Um, maybe don't say falling head over heels because that's really romantic, but it can seem a lot for someone. Um, if they're not expecting it. If they're not expecting it. So I would say definitely express how you're feeling. Um, yeah. I how agree. You? What do you think? I 100%. I, I honestly think my ex and I started as really good friends and we always like were flirting. And so we knew that we liked each other, but we started as good friends. But I agree with Alex. I think say something I mean you'll always have a what if and I think you'll always have a what if even if you're like in a relationship with someone else you'll always go back and be like I really like Alex mm -hmm, <laughs> you know totally. um but yeah just be careful be careful with how you word it and just really think of how your relationship is with this person because I know some people um have flirty relationships with some people you know and that's just how their relationship is so like just see how it is say something really like maybe subtle to kind of test the waters out, see how they react. And if they are just like, don't automatically just shut it down, then maybe like another day, like say something, but yeah, just be careful not to overwhelm them and just yes. like go in very optimistic, but also expect the worst because the worst thing that can happen is they say, I'm sorry, I don't feel that way. Or like something that they can probably say too is like, Oh, like, I just don't want to ruin our friendship, which is kind of like lame, but whatever. Um, mm -hmm. So just like expect them to say like, they just want to stay friends. And then just, it's okay. It's fine. You still have a really good friend. It sucks that they don't like you that way. But it also they can change your mind in a couple Totally. Um, I think so too. Cause it's, it's just like, you never know. And the worst that happens, I say this, whether it's a friend, whether it's a crush you have at, in a class or something, whatever it is, always express how you feel because the worst that'll happen is that nothing changes. Like that's literally, literally the worst. I mean, I guess the worst is bad things could happen, but like chances are most people are mature. They will not yeah. take offense or be uncomfortable. Like as long as you do it in a not uncomfortable way, people shouldn't I would think be uncomfortable by yeah, it. So just, yeah. You get cash and exactly. it'll be cash. Exactly. And the next question is how to build a long lasting friendship and how to choose your friends. Okay, I love this question. Me because too. I feel like especially because okay, I feel like a lot of friendships come from like college and high school. So once you're past that, it's like hard to figure out like, okay, who's your solid friends? Um, I would say something I've learned. I mean, I'm not sure like what age this person asking this is, but I would say just like start. I mean, it's hard with COVID right now, but like whether you're social distance with someone, go meet up at a park or just like FaceTime them. Like it's fun to just like connect with people and just kind of like see how it goes. Like, I think it's, I think it's, it's easier said than done to be like, oh, just like set up a time to talk to someone. But like, I think right now everyone really is craving friendship. Um, and I think you can kind of discover like just from a short FaceTime call, whether you want to pursue a friendship with them. And um, I think a really great way to meet friends too is like on Twitter and on Instagram, follow people who are like maybe similar to you, have similar interests, um, maybe join different like Facebook groups that are like for a podcast you like or um, an interest you have, like if it's knitting or something. There's lots of friendship, uh, lots of avenues, I think, to meet people like-minded. And I think you can kind of go from there and figure out who makes you feel good. I think that's an important thing in friendships too, like who you feel joyful after speaking to and not feel drained. 100%. I'm so glad you said that because that's actually one of the points I was going to make. Um, I think what matters with long lasting friendships is 
I think all you are who you surround yourself with. And I think your friends should always empower you, make you feel good, critique you when it's necessary and push you to be a better person. An example, Alex and I, I think we have a long lasting friendship because we've always respected each other. And whenever I talk to her, whether it's for the show or not, I just feel good. And like, even when we weren't doing the show, like we would just literally talk for hours on the phone and that you would feel so good after. And like she, Alex motivates me to be a better person and to like follow my dreams. And so I feel like your friends should be that way. Like, yeah, you're cute. <laughs> I agree with you too. <laughs> um, so I feel like, you know, the, the key to long lasting friendships is being open, respecting each other's boundaries, because every relationship is different. and Every person has different boundaries. So you really have to understand, you know, that person, how they are, how they communicate, but also just like make sure your friends make you feel good. Make sure they are not judgmental. Make sure they just push you to be a better person and really like, yeah, just push you to be a better person. I think that's you don't want to choose people that make you feel bad. Like if you have a conversation with them and then you're you were constantly feeling like shit or you're constantly feeling like your views just don't align or like you're more more like your morals because you can have people with different opinions, but um if your morals don't align and you just don't feel good after the conversation, then they're probably not worth being your friend, you know? Totally. I totally agree. And I think a little um goes a long way in terms of just showing you care too just reaching out and feeling how are how are you like how are you yeah. doing what are what excites you right now what are you working on I think that's super important too and kind of see who reciprocates and who shows that care back and kind of go from there exactly okay well next question this person said would love to hear some more ideas for safe social gang gatherings maybe that are yeah. zoom can't think of any and it me um I think a really good one is if you live in the same town or same area um I've been doing social distance picnics at the beach or at a park I feel like those are a really good alternative for like actually hanging out besides zoom because that way if you're doing a picnic like each person brings their own food so you don't have to worry about going to a restaurant and possibly getting exposed to people with COVID or whatever so you can pick up food you can order take out whatever you want you bring your own food and then you guys can all sit apart and like wear your masks and you're outside and yeah and so like you can go to the beach on a nice day or a park or like wherever just like be outside kind of and just bring your own food and I feel like that would be fun I totally agree with that. I don't do it enough because I need more social interaction. But one day, I think it was like two months ago, me and maybe like six other friends all sat like super far from each other just in a big circle. And we all bought brought like a drink to have. And it was so fun just to like connect with everyone. And it's not yeah. the same, but it's nice to be in person and like kind of be in that common area together. Because sometimes Zoom, I totally agree with whoever asked this. Like it, it feels kind of disingenuous feels. sometimes. Yeah. So it's nice to be kind of like in person together again. Yeah, I agree. So the next question is, you just started dating someone around V-Day. Like it's only been one really good long date so far. Do you make V-Day plans? Hmm. Alex? Hmm. Okay. I am going to say, I, I'm going to say two options. If okay. you feel comfortable, because... It's it's in the beginning, so I get how you could not feel comfortable. If you feel comfortable, ask. Just ask. Just be like, hey, did you want to, like, do something for Valentine's Day? Like, don't make it casual. Don't be like, hey, like, you have to, like, get, like, proposed. Obviously, you won't say that. But, like, it, it, make it super casual. Just like, hey, like, I'm into you. I think it'd be fun to spend this day together. If you're not comfortable with asking, I say no. <laughs> There's no really explanation. Just if you don't feel comfortable asking, don't even I like Alex's idea. Just ask because the honest the truth is too, like they're probably thinking the same thing. Like if it was one really good date and if you guys really hit it off, they're probably thinking like, oh shoot, like are we doing something on Valentine's Day or not? So just ask like, hey, like no pressure, but like, do you want to hang out? Like we could just do something and just do something really small. Like don't get each other gifts because that can really like be like intimidating and send someone out the door depending who you're dating. Um, so just do something really like low key. And just like chill, more like a hangout. Don't make it like such a big date or anything crazy. And then maybe next year you can do something special. Yes. No, I totally agree. I think that's perfect. I think, and don't like expect anything either. Yeah. Like I don't think you can plan for anything to happen. And that's kind of what I meant earlier by the no. Like I don't think you can plan for anything to happen unless you ask or do yeah. they ask. But it, since you're the one thinking about it, definitely ask if you feel comfortable. The next question says chronically single 20 something it feels as if all of my romantic aspirations have been thwarted by covid 
I feel guilty about using apps just for validation and COVID all virtual, but I just want a partner, you know? What do you guys propose I do? Okay, so first, I think it's so hard right now to date because of COVID, like totally get that, especially like spending so much time alone. If you, you know, it's just, it's a different time. Um, But you said something that's really interesting. You said, I feel guilty about using apps just for validation. First thought, you should not be seeking validation from anyone else except yourself. Because at the end of the day, you not saying that you are doing this on purpose or that this is your intention. But in general, I just feel like you should not get validation from anyone else. It needs to come from yourself because no one else can make you happy except yourself. So um, if you are going on these apps because you just want someone to validate you and how you look or how you like your personality or whatever, like hmm, maybe take a step back from the dating apps and really like make yourself feel good. Um, But if you're just like, you know what, I feel like a boss ass bitch. I'm confident as fuck. I just want someone to call me pretty once in a while. That is also very valid and do not feel guilty for going on dating apps to do that. Because if you're a confident boss ass bitch, then you're a confident boss ass bitch and you just want to date. And that's okay. And if you are on dating apps and you do want to go on a date with someone, I think first just like do FaceTime dates and kind of like feel them out because you know, there's a lot of thotties out there. And I just feel like not everyone's taking COVID as seriously, or they'll, they'll act like they're taking COVID seriously, but they're not. So like go on a couple FaceTime dates, really feel it out. And if you really think like they're taking it as seriously as you are, or not as seriously as you are, whatever, if you guys are on the same page with like COVID, maybe like go on a date, but like do a social distance picnic. And do that a couple of times just to see like, really, are they being sus? Or like, nah, are we good? And then like, just like really take all the precautions and just like, you know, cause you don't want to expose yourself. Maybe like stalk them on social media, like watch their stories to make sure they're not going to bars every night yes. too. Yeah. See what they're doing for sure. I think I totally agree with that. And I think like one thing I will say though, and I agree with you. I think, uh, I think before looking for validation, definitely feel confident in yourself before even trying to date. But I don't necessarily hate the idea of just using a dating app just to use it. Like it doesn't have to be like, oh, I'm putting myself out there. It can just be to just to to have fun and swipe. It can just be to browse. Mm -hmm. It can just be because you're bored. Like I think we're so at home right now and we need avenues to pretend because you never know what will happen. So it's just like if you're just swiping to swipe and you don't even want to reply to anyone unless they really strike your fancy, do that too. And just like kind of I think it's a good idea to put yourself out there but not commit to putting yourself out there, if that makes yeah. sense. Like, it doesn't have to be a commitment, but I think it's good to kind of put feelers out there. I agree. Our next question. What's the best way to introduce a new toy, especially when you haven't used any with your partner? Ooh, I love this one. And I feel like it's all about communication again. But... I think definitely just maybe starting the conversation with asking your partner, like, hey, like, we should try something new. What would you be interested in? And then you can let them answer and you could be like, well, I'm interested in this toy. And blah, 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 blah. (laughs) the Vibrator Deluxe 5000, whatever it is. (laughs) So I feel like definitely starting that conversation and seeing what maybe there's something that they want to try that they haven't expressed yet, just because you guys maybe haven't had that kind of open dialogue. So I I think that's a great way to kind of open the dialogue and figure out what you both want to do and introduce it because I'm I'm sure they'll be receptive. Yeah, so I think so. And also, like, if they're not receptive, don't push it, you know, like they could say no to a vibrator, but yes to um, I don't know what else What's like 50 shades of gray stuff like a rope. Um, Right? Yeah. yeah. Or like cufflings. I don't I don't know. (laughs) (laughs) But they could say no to one thing. (laughs) Uh, yeah they could say no to one thing but be open to something else so just like just because they said no to the one thing you proposed first that doesn't mean they're like closing the door on all toys you know just gotta find the toy that works for them that tickles their fancy I think so too and I think you can kind of build it up to it too like I don't know what toy you're thinking of in particular but say you're thinking I don't know butt plug but (laughs) if you don't want to jump to that yet maybe start with a little like finger play down there and kind of build your way up and build comfortability and see what they're comfortable with. I that's a very good point. (laughs) Yes. Okay the next one and the final question says going after a guy in quarantine but living too far away to go on an in-person date. 
how to get to know them or test the vibe out, see if they like you, etc. In all caps, but in quarantine. <laughs> Honestly, uh, I know like FaceTimes. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm gonna I'm gonna say it. <laughs> you guys should have. It's like I really hate doing this because like if you're too far away, it's gonna have to be a FaceTime. But yeah. um, I think have like a FaceTime date and like really see if they're like talking to you and putting an extra effort to continue the conversation because if someone's into you they're gonna keep the conversation going so like you don't want to like always be dry when you're talking to them on this like FaceTime date because then they're gonna think you're not interested but you want to like really see like is he bringing in like a good contribution to the conversation is he keeping the conversation going is it super awkward because it can be awkward sometimes that's that's totally fine especially like the first couple of dates I think but not that I've been on a date in a while um, <laughs> but <laughs> I've heard um but I do think like yeah just see how much effort they're putting into it see if they're blowing you off or just like you know totally I think so too. And I think maybe like if you wanted something new to try and see how you guys like interact more, um, there's an app. Let me pull it up because I forget what the name is. It's called like, it's called House Party. And I know it's meant oh, for like multiple it. people, but it's like a little, yeah, it's like a little game thing. You can play like Scrabble or not Scrabble. What's the um like um Pictionary? Like you can play oh, okay. different games like that. So you could do that. See if you guys like vibe, have fun with each other. Another fun idea if you're just tired of doing like, virtual dates maybe have a happy hour with a couple other friends and like see how they vibe and get along with your friends or yeah. see how you vibe with their friends or maybe like bring all your friends together like maybe like you and your two best friends and have him bring it was a him right yeah a guy have him bring their two best friends and kind of see how that goes um I I think it's it's hard but I think there's ways that you can see how they are in different settings and figure out okay is this someone I want to pursue and then what's kind of the next step for us yeah, that's really good advice. I like that. Yay. Well, this was so fun. This was so fun. I hope you guys liked the, our advice. <laughs> okay, so let's get to our good stories of the week. But first, what's your good news of the week? Um, My good news of the week is that my one of my best friends, Emily, it's her today was her last day at her like old job or at her job and it was a super like kind of toxic work environment so I'm just so happy that she's done with that place so that's my, oh my it's, not, gosh. it's not personally like good news but like it's still good news <laughs> no that's amazing congrats to Emily I love that what's your good news of the week um I would say I've just been like having I've been trying to kind of exploring career wise different things I've been doing like informational interviews and I feel like I'm really establishing like what I want to do I love that. Oh, <laughs> you're going places, pal. Like, I genuinely mean that. Like, you're so talented. You're going places. <laughs> and we're going yeah. together because I mean. Yeah. We're a packed deal with the show. <laughs> yes. <laughs> okay, so uh, now your good news of the week. We got to get to it. Emily, do you want to go first? Yes. So Megan said, got a job offer in a dream city. That is amazing. I love that. Uh, it's always fun always fun to like do a new opportunity and go somewhere new yeah I'm like this is a great opportunity so I'm happy for you yay congrats Trinity said had a life-giving four-hour FaceTime convo yesterday in the middle of my chaos (laughs) which I'm obsessed with and it's so funny because Trinity and I had like a two hour long FaceTime last week. So I'm obsessed that she like does this frequently. <laughs> I know. Good for you. But also like four hours is a really long time. It's really long. I love that. <laughs> <laughs> and Asia said, I got a new cat who is just the sweetest. How cute. Aww. I love I, I'm, that. I'm honestly allergic cats to cats. Cats are nice so. to have. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm allergic. <laughs> yeah, it's nice to have a pet during this time. <laughs> yeah. That's true. That's I true. I would I feel like if I was allergic to cats, I'd be cool with it. But if I was allergic yeah. to dogs, I'd be really sad because I love I, dogs. I kind of I'm like a little bit allergic to dogs, so it needs to, if it sheds a lot, I'm probably allergic to it. If I like were to live with it. Oh but, yeah, yeah, it sucks. But anyways, <laughs> yay! Yeah, Thanks for tuning in, everyone. I hope you guys really enjoyed our advice. Yes. Um, don't forget to follow us and subscribe to our YouTube channel, What a Week with Alex and Emily. And also you can be a Patreon for us and donate if you want to go the extra mile.
Yes. And then you can find us on Instagram at what a week show on Twitter at what a week show underscore. And we have an announcement for y'all. Our book club is coming up on Tuesday, March 2nd at 7 30 PM. And then our yes. book is called, Oh gosh, I have it over there. It's called such a fun age by Kylie Reed. So get that, join us. Uh, there will be more information on our Instagram. Yes. So you want to get the book and start reading because March 2nd, we're going to talk about the book. So get it now. Yes. I can't wait. Yes. So thank you guys so much and have a great weekend because we're posting on Fridays now. So have a good weekend.